To edit the user interface for my application, I'll head to the Res or Resource folder under the app. Within that folder is a layout folder and a file called activity underscore main dot XML. This file represents our main activity screen for the application. It's already open within Android Studio. Let me take a moment to close the Gradle Projects pane at the right and give us a little more screen real estate to work with. Working within the Design tab of activity underscore main dot XML, I'll delete the existing text field that says Hello World. Then I'll choose a switch from the widgets at the left and drag it onto the activity screen. Next, within the Projects pane, I'll give the switch a unique ID that's a little more meaningful than the default. Here, I'll call it On-Off Switch. Then I'll get rid of the label for the switch. Now I'll connect the switch to my code so that I can have LivePD interact with it. I'll head to the Java folder under App within the Android pane and select the com.example.hdes.hello package. From there, I'll open the main activity Java file. This file is associated with the activity XML file that I just added the switch to. Within this file, I'm going to head to the onCreate method. This method is called when the application creates the activity. Within it, I'm going to call a function that I'll create in just a moment, init GUI. Notice that init GUI is red. This is Android Studio's way of telling me that I can't find that particular function. No worries, we'll create it now. Just above the onCreate method, I'll create a private function called init GUI. Within that function, I'll create a reference to the switch that I created earlier. I'll start by typing switch with a capital S and then choose to complete it with the suggested autocomplete. By choosing to complete it with the suggested autocomplete, Android Studio automatically imported any packages necessary to bring the switch class into this file. Right now, this import is hidden at the top of the code, but I can easily reveal it. I'll hide the import statements again and continue. I'll name my reference on off switch. Then I'll cast the result of the find view by ID method as a switch and pass r.id.onoff switch as the argument for the method. With that, I now have a reference to the switch stored in the variable called onoff switch. The next thing to do is to set an event listener that will respond to any changes of the switch. On the next line, I'll type onoff switch dot set on checked change listener. I'll need a little bit more screen real estate for this next part. So let me go ahead and expand this file to take up the entire screen width. Now I'll instantiate a new on check change listener and select it from the autocomplete. This will cause Android Studio to fill in some helpful boilerplate code. Within this boilerplate code is a method called on checked change. In that method, I'll log a message to Android Studio that simply provides us with the evidence that our interface is talking to our code. For the first argument, I'll just type on off switch. Then I'll use the value of method of the string class so that I can display the value of is checked, which is a Boolean, as a string within the logging function. It's time to see the results in the emulator. As I interact with the switch, I can see the result of the log message in Android Studio. The switch is successfully connected, and I can now have it interact with LivePD. Speaking of which, what good is a LivePD app without a PD patch? That's the next thing that I'll create.